Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and welcome to a very special video that I have for you guys. This is going to be a just a how-to video on chipping and weathering German armor. Now, I've done this obviously quite a few times on my videos, but a lot of times it is just put together really quickly and I figure you guys have watched me do it enough times that uh, you guys get the general idea. But what I thought I would do is because I get so many questions about certain things on it, I realize, and there's so many thousands of new subscribers that have come on since we've done the original videos, that we would go ahead and do this one today. And what I've done is I've taken this is a Rifle Model Tiger. This is one I built a couple of years ago, now did a video on it. Before, this morning I got in here early, we painted the entire vehicle over again, just put a basic camouflage coat on it, and then sealed it with Tester's lacquer, 1260 on it. And that is going to seal in our entire paint job. Now what I've done on this tank, is since it's a test vehicle, you know, a painting mule we'll call it, that we're going to practice up chipping and things like that. So this side of the tank, you'll notice that the camouflage is a little bit darker. It's the thicker, later war, less dark yellow. And on this side, we have more of the dark yellow with just a little bit of camouflage on it. And you'd see that either variation on it, just depending on what time of the war it is or how much paint they had, just all different types of variations that would go into the different Tigers. So we've got the, the vehicle painted and all sealed up on it. And we're going to use some of our MIG washes and our foam brushes and I'll explain all this stuff as we get into the video so I'm excited to do these how-to videos to really spend maybe 10-15 minutes just showing you the real basics on it that you can practice at home and within no time at all guys you'll be having great great models come out of it with the chipping so let's get started on it Okay guys, the first thing we're going to talk about is the chipping color that we're going to use. And what I'm going to show you right now is in the corner of the, uh, the screen over here, you're going to see the, the three colors that we use to make up this brown chipping color. Now the other color that we'll also use will be NATO black is also a little, little go over, but this is going to be the main color because it kind of gives a, like a, and I use the word oxidized metal, and I know oxidized metal is, you know, steel is rust, but we're not really going for a real rust look. We're going for a look that the metal is starting, starting to corrode, but it hasn't turned into full rust. It's more, I guess surface rust would be a, a great, great way to say it. And as a tank would, you know, get scratched up in water and dew and everything overnight, it starts to build up, you're going to get some slight, slight amount of rust. Now with that, we're going to, once we get all the chipping done, we're going to go ahead and use some of MIG's streaking, light rust wash, streaking grime, dark streaking grime, streaking grime for Africa core, which I will show you how to use this stuff right here, and this streaking rust, which got yellow paint poured all over it. But the first thing I want to talk to you about is what we're going to streak with, and that is this foam right here, and this is, this is a foam rubber type packing material that you can I usually get it from you know people have given me big piles of it it's used as a packing material but if you having a hard time finding it this is the exact same kind of sponge that they use for the the foam paint brushes that you find like in the uh, you know, like Home Depot or Lowe's in this country and in your countries, I mean, any type of home improvement place will have these foam sponges. And there's, it's very easy to cut up with a pair of scissors to get like a, you know, a nice sharp edge. But a lot of times we're going to want it where we just want to take it and tear a chunk off and then kind of just you know, beat up the edge right here. And this will, this will give us really uneven scratches. This is something that we want to, we want to do all the time with it. So now that we've gotten shown you what the oh the other thing we also show you too is enamel thinner and I've got just a basic bottle of enamel thinner that we use over and over again and got it off camera here but I just use a giant bottle of odorless mineral mineral spirits if I can get the words out that I use all of the time and a big jar big gallon like this is like. I think $14 in the uh, like a Home Depot and this is the type of stuff that will last you forever. I also use it when I do oil paintings at home and stuff so it's it's always good to have just a big can like that it goes a really long way. Okay so 
you can see we have the Ryfield model kit I told you about. Now I've gone ahead and I've just painted over the tools. The tools and all that kind of stuff can be re repainted later. This video is strictly to show you guys chipping and weathering techniques on the armor. Now we've repainted it and we completely clear coated with uh, Tester's 1260 dull coat. Get the front of it right here for you guys. And the 1260 dull coat is a lacquer that is going to completely seal in this, uh, this paint job we have. I'm just going to use the cap of this to kind of put a little blob of our chipping color on. And then just taking a piece of torn up sponge, we're going to just dip it lightly into the, uh, to the paint, blot it all over on there, let it soak in. And then we're going to take our paper towel and blot off quite a bit of the excess like that and then we can just start working on the the edges here really really light and if it starts to lay too much paint down blot it a little bit more on the uh, the paper towel And what we're going to do, uh, simulate here is scratches and things you know as the crew are sliding product, you know, shells and bags and anything else in the world you can possibly think of, it's going to scratch up the edges of the paint. And this is the first, first step you want to do on this. And you want to hit any areas that you think that it's going to get scratched up, uh, especially around the road wheels, any of the fenders, things like that. And it's just a matter of lightly letting it build up. Also want to show you the uh, the other side where the the camouflage is a little bit darker, and as you can see, I've started working on the edge of the turret right here, and we've started to put a little bit more beat up area than you normally would see. But this that's the whole purpose of this video is to kind of show it. So what we're going to do here is going to do the exact same thing, and it's just a matter of building up slowly. And you can also drag it right down the side of the vehicle, too, to create some scratches. And finally, you can also take some real fine areas and make some just... little areas that are torn up a little bit more. And some, some of the, uh, the weathering is going to be a little bit more than we would normally do, but that is more or less just to show you what you can do with the chipping. What I'm doing right here is to show you a, a little example of using some different colors. Now this little area right here we've done with some Mission Models red oxide primer paint. and. It's, the paint is, works really good, and if you're doing red oxide, it's very, very nice for it. The, the problem that I have is because so, someone asked, why don't you just use red oxide primer underneath it? And you can see it just kind of sticks out, and it's kind of bright. I don't think it has the worn effect as, the, uh, as the, this area right here. This looks more like a worn. And this red oxide is probably more accurate, but artistically, the, this other kind of stuff looks a little better, I personally think. But to each his own, so... The other option we also have too is we can also take a little bit of NATO black. Sorry about that. And then with the NATO black, you can also use that in some areas and kind of show you the different colors. And you could even go over the, uh, the red oxide a little bit. Now I like using the NATO black on the areas lightly around where the the brown color is and you can see the when we do the nato black around it really sticks out really well against the the br red brown color that we're putting on here so sometimes you have to you know use a little bit of we'll call it art artistic license to get your model to look really beat up and worn put a little bit over the green 
it just has a more of a contrast color to it but it's still it kind of your eye kind of just blends it all together but you can really see the the weathering all the way down the side okay and another little thing that we can do here is we can take our foam sponge again and let's say we want to make some real minor scratches on the the green and the red brown color we can go ahead and do that by just taking a little touch of our dark yellow color and just kind of go over some of these areas and that'll be some of the paint that that paint washed you know got scraped off but didn't go enough to go all the way through into the uh, to the to the metal and finally quickly I'll show you too that if you decide let's say you want to make some bigger chips you can take your your real fine paintbrush and just make a random jagged pattern or any type of like scrape lines that making them go in different angles it could be going the tank going through trees or you know through bushes and things that just over time wear off or God knows it could have been smash you part of a fence or a building or anything else you just don't know and scratches will come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes and if you want you can all go back over this now too with a little bit of dark yellow and put a little little touch of it here and there around the edges of some of these scratches and what that's going to do is because this dark yellow that's on here has been sealed it's a darker darker dark yellow whereas this is going to come out a little bit lighter so this will appear as if it's scratches that haven't gone all the way through the dark yellow paint into the the metal and that's why you got these little rub areas and this can also be done you know that if you wanted to do some little scratches across some of your uh, your browns and green colors too where they're just not super super deep scratches okay now we've got an extreme close-up now that we've got that all done we can go ahead we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna use a little enamel thinner and just put a thin coat of that down here and then we're just gonna pick one at random the first one we're gonna use is streaking grime and we're just going to show you because sometimes these scratches can be a little bit harsh just on the paint job on itself without blending in some other stuff to it. So we're going to take our streaking grime and just going to put a couple of little dots of it here right along the top. And before we do any more on that, we're going to put a little touch of our rust wash, just a slight little amount. We're going to put a couple of dots of that on here too, in between some of the other ones that we have. And now we're going to take our brush that had the thinner on it, and we're just going to lightly start to drag down. Real, real subtle on it. I'm going to grab that paint and stretch it down the side of the vehicle. You can go over this as many times as you want. The more times you go over it, the more you're going to take off. You can go real light just using the corner of the brush. And it'll give some nice little streaks. And then let's say we want to put this little, this little area right here. We want to put a little bit more of a rust color right there. So we're going to put a little blob of the rust. It's obviously going to start to run down right away. But we can just go in there blot it a little bit and then just take our brush and drag it down and you can see we start to get the little bit of rust streaks streaming down the side there and this is the part that is completely subjective and up to you obviously most vehicles don't get beat up that much in in real life combat uh, some of them do and if they did they're probably you know destroyed right away 
And if you want to make a vehicle that looks like it's been sitting in a field for, you know, a year and rusting up and beaten up, that is totally up to you. This is all, like I said, an artist representation of what you're trying to achieve. Now, the other thing I want to show you is how to do that same kind of thing with flat surfaces. So we're going to put a little blob of uh, enamel thinner up here. And the reason you want to do the enamel thinner, it gives you a longer working time with any of the, uh, the, the products you're going to work with. So we're going to first put a little touch of the rust color. And, and don't worry about it if it's heavy. We, we did that on purpose. And a little bit of the streaking grime. And you can see that's very heavy, but it's not to worry about it. We're going to take our same brush again and just start to blot it straight on. And then knock off the excess on a paper towel. And you just keep, keep working it into your paint. Anywhere it's a little too thick, just take your brush again and keep working it in. And that's going to give you little dirty, dirty areas that'll just start to build up over time. And that gives you your, your dirt and grime and effect on the top of the vehicle. And you can see, just using just some, some basic techniques like this, you can really quickly, you know, beat up a vehicle really fast. And finally, I want to show you what we can do with some of the gray streaking grime colors. And we are going to put a little bit more thinner because this is starting to dry off now. Just you don't want to go too heavy on this. This is going to create kind of like rain streaks on it. So we'll put a few little dots of this gray streaking grime. Mainly on the, the darker colors too. I think it works really well. And once again, it's not totally up to you how thick you're going to put this on. But I want to drag those little gray streaks down the side. real lightly and hopefully you can see you know the sunlight's a little bit the lights a little bright right there but you can see that it starts to turn into some streaks of like like I'm saying rain streaks going down the side and I think that can really make things pop up pop out really well especially on your darker colors, because sometimes the darker colors kind of all blend together, but with these little streaks on it, it can really add some depth to your vehicle. The last thing we're going to do to show you real quick is, on the lighter side, what we can do with some of these little, these are the attachment points for the fenders. So we're going to put a little bit of thinner down like we just did, and then just touching a few of them here with the uh, streaking grime. And then just lightly pull down. And just slowly take your time blending it till you get to the point that you like it. And if you take too much off, put a little bit more back on there. And then take your brush and just drag it down. That's the benefit of using these enamels, that you have such a long time to work with them. And also don't forget any areas like this, like where the, uh, the track cables are. You can just imagine dirt and grime stuff getting built up on that and then they get a little wet. Where is it going to streak off of? Right on, right on down the side of the vehicle. Now, the last thing I want to show you is a, is a step that you want to do at the very end after all of this is dried. Uh, I'm going to hold it up to the light here and hopefully you can see some of the enamel streaks that are on the side of the vehicle. We want to get rid of those because they are, we want the coloring to stay the same but not those light and dark streaks that are uh, from the enamel. 
So we're going to take this outside and we're going to spray it with one light coat of 1260 Tester's Dull Coat. And that is going to still leave all the streaks there, but get rid of that the, uh, the shiny spots. Well, here we are. We've let the, uh, the Dull Coat dry for a little while. And we've gotten rid of those, those light and dull streaks that go down the side. So now all we are left with are the, the rust streaks, the grime streaks, and of course our chips all over it here. And this just shows you, this, is, this was done really fast just to show you the technique that's involved with this. This is probably a grand total of maybe about an hour's worth of work. Just having fun playing around with it. When you build your model, you can do whatever you want on it. That's the fun of modeling. If you want to make this thing look like it's been in a field for 50 years, great that's totally up to you if you want to make it look a little bit just with a few little scratches i've given you guys the the basic techniques you you go ahead and run with those and have some fun with it and i like to show you guys the technique like this and and that's because we are getting so many thousands of new subscribers every month that are joining and it may have not seen some of the older videos and, and want to just you know the, the basic model building technique bump it up a notch and I know there'll be probably be a lot of you like oh I've seen all this a bunch of times before but don't forget there are so many new guys and we want to we want to make everybody feel like they're welcome in this hobby and that's that's the best part about this hobby is the artistic license you get to have with it and just having some fun and the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is now that I've kind of shown you what to do here I want to see what you guys are doing uh, if you get a chance go to Facebook mediocre modelers and you can join. It's free to join onto the Mediocre Modelers Club on Facebook. It's my personal website here that I get to see all of the work that you guys are doing. So I'll put the uh, the web address on the bottom down here. Join up on it. We'll uh, we'll let you in, and then start posting your streaks and stuff. We'd love to love to see the work that you're doing. And I'm also just going to show you this, uh, the Vespa that we built, it was probably about two weeks ago. All of the exact same techniques were used on that vehicle as this, and you can see the, the final, final production, the, the way it turned out. So that is the completion of this video. Now there would be some other steps that you would want to take into uh, weathering this vehicle. This video is primarily talking about chipping and the, the streaking that goes into it. After that you would probably want to put some pigments on it, some more uh, like panel lines, things like that to make things pop out a little bit. And we'll actually do some more videos on just dealing with those as well very very soon. And the other option you could also do is just spray the entire thing with XF57 buff coat in an airbrush from far distance away and that'll put a nice little layer of dust over thing kind of knock everything down but but those like I said are other videos that we'll do in the near future so I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming